Hey everybody, I have a subscriber ask me about how the uh, radios that keep the uh, locomotives in contact with each other, the head end and the uh, helper units of the distributed power units, how they uh, keep in radio contact with each other through the tunnels. So I did a little research, talked to a couple of people smarter than me, which I'm sure you didn't think was possible, and I got the skinny. I'm going to explain to you how it works right now. The system is called the Locotrol 4 Frequency Message Repeater, and it's used in areas of uh, uh, marginal radio reception, such as tunnels, uh, long cuts and deep cuts, and sometimes in yards, large yards, where there are lots of buildings and uh, towers and other things that might obstruct radio signals and other uh, radio interference issues. And the function of the system is to boost the radio frequency signals between the lead unit and uh, helper units in the train or uh, distributed power units, whether they're in the middle of the train or at the end of the train. And, uh, and of course, those units have to be equipped with the same system. Um, and it starts at a yard such as Roseville or Colton or even a yard that can be done right here in Bakersfield. We're not so far in the backwoods down here that we can't program a low control system. And it's programmed based on the projected needs of particular trains such as uh, length, uh, the number of uh, units that will be involved, uh, you know, whether they're in the middle of the train or the end of the train, and obviously a train with uh, units in the middle of the train at the end is going to be a longer train. And once the locomotives are programmed, they will automatically request assistance as needed as they approach tunnels, and an icon will appear on the display screen of the locomotive engineer. All right, let's go check out one of the sites. Okay, uh, at the tunnels, there is a cabin, like that one up there. In this case, this is tunnel one. And uh, inside that cabin up there, and inside each cabin that utilizes this system, there's what is called a stop and forward unit, an RF uh, repeater unit, and then the antenna that you can see on top of the cabin. Then right here at the portal of the tunnel, you can see that antenna right there. And uh, they also have uh, amplifiers in some tunnels. Uh, I'm told that uh, they'll place those amplifiers about 1,200 feet apart. So that eliminates all the tunnels on the mountain, with the possible exception of Tunnel 5, which is 1,175 feet long. I don't know if they use an amplifier there or not, but they do have amplifiers for those applications. Uh, this system is passive uh, and stays in receive mode until it's called upon for use. And when a train approaches the tunnel and it is deemed necessary that the system be used, it contacts the store and forward unit, which places the train on an active list, activates the system, puts the RF repeater in transmit mode, and starts a predetermined time that is based on local needs such as tunnel length. And uh, all this happens in milliseconds. And once the system starts transmitting, it will only transmit to that train and no others that may be in the area. If a train still requires assistance after the predetermined time has expired, uh, it will have to re-request assistance. It drops off the active list at the end of that time. And when it re-requests uh, the assistance, it starts the whole thing over again and starts the time over again. And a train may still require assistance if, for some reason it had to stop before it cleared the tunnel or is moving very slowly. Uh, once a train no longer requires assistance, once the uh, time has expired, the system goes back into passive mode and begins receiving again until another train comes along and requests assistance. And uh, I'd also like to add that uh, it works both directions, uphill and downhill on the mountain. It's just important that uh, units remain in contact with each other for power going up the hill or dynamic braking going down the hill. The system is also connected to the UP servers by a local area network, a landline, but that is only for purposes of monitoring and has nothing to do with the low control system. 
Okay, we're at a kind of a different uh, location here, uh, put together a little differently for the tunnel radios. We are at the east or south portal of tunnel number five. You can see these cabins over my shoulder here. Two of them belong to communications and one belongs to the signal. Uh, the signal department hut is for the control point here and you can see the uh, facing signals there for the west end or north end of cliff. What they've done here is they have tied four tunnels together with fiber optics. The reason they did that was because uh, of the mountainous territory, uh, very difficult to uh, get in and out of and get good reception uh, for radio frequencies. So they just piped it through on fiber optic cable that is buried and uh, it connects tunnel three, which is down there behind me, tunnel five and tunnel seven and tunnel eight. Uh, right there, over the hood of my truck, you can see where it goes around that curve. That's where Tunnel 6 used to be, and that's why this isn't connected to Tunnel 6. But anyway, they have used fiber optics to connect these uh, tunnels here, and uh, they all report back to a uh, single hut. The uh, terrain around here is why they did this with fiber optics cable, and I knew nothing about it until I talked to someone smarter than me. Well, now you know as much about this system as I do, and uh, I hope I've made it about as clear as mud. Uh, I would uh, like to thank General Electric Transportation Systems and a few people that are smarter than me for uh, helping me put all this together, giving me some information, and helping me with the research. Uh, it's been kind of interesting. It's always nice to learn some new stuff. Uh, and uh, as usual, if you have any other ideas, like I said, I got this idea from a subscriber. So if you have any ideas, anything you'd like me to look into, uh, anything you'd like to see, uh, let me know in the comments below. Shoot me an email, motorpoet59 at gmail.com. I'll see what I can do. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. And we will see you all later.